Thank you very much. And good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, friends. Good morning, brothers. Good morning, sisters. Good morning, in-laws and outlaws. <laughs> Uh, well, thank you for, uh, I'm really, first of all, I'm really very happy to be at this camp and I thank you for inviting me uh, and it's also for the privilege of being on this panel. I, the issue of migration within nations, between nations, between regions and between continents is really a very critical issue today. And let me just begin by saying that within Africa, we have migration problems. Um, right now, there's a lot of xenophobic violence in Southern Africa. Uh, and I was, I'm su I was supposed to go from here to South Africa as soon as after returning to Nigeria, but I've decided not to go in protest to the attack on migrants in that country. But that is within Africa. Uh, I think the biggest challenge we see is when migrants cross regional boundaries and the origin of this movement is not because people for some people travel because they like to travel some people migrate because they just want to experience another culture and humans have always migrated there's hardly any nation that started in one spot and ended in that position people are moving all the time people are mixed all the time you find some people are Nigerians and Italian at the same time. Uh, just because this migration, there's a mix of culture, relationships, friendships, comradeships, and solidarity. But what, if we want to look at the history, what has caused this disruption is the capitalist system of exploitation, extraction without any sense of responsibility and without any sense of accountability. If you go back to the colonial days, the colonial masters could take virtually anything. They could steal whatever they wanted to steal. Whatever was good was taken. Not to in favor of the communities or the regions where these resources were taken, but for the home countries of the colonial forces. But that was also to drive global capital. And so some places were storehouses for exploitation for abuses human rights abuses and all kinds of things today hundreds of years later it's not much different but now in addition to exploitation of humans and regions humans are now exploiting mother earth and so when you when people see mother earth as just a resource to be captured transformed or exchange for money, then humans don't count for anything. The challenge is that the level of exploitation has direct consequence to the quality of the environment. And so where I come from, I come from Nigeria. To be precise, I come from the Niger Delta, the oil belt where Companies like Eni, like Shell, Exxon, Total, Mobile, all the rest are making a killing to load up, fill up their bank accounts. Now, when the environment is totally destroyed, when you have ecocide, where the environment can hardly recover or support humans, then people just have to move for the reason of survival. And people have a right to move. Would climate change compounding the problem? I personally find it very disturbing that even some activists don't accept that people displaced by climate change are refugees. And they, when I ask this question, I'm told that the Geneva Convention did not include climate displacement in the definition of a refugee, and I think this is very stupid. Because if anybody says that definition of refugees stopped with those who are displaced by war, environmental degradation is the declaration of war. It's warfare. Because 
you know, warfare has limited impact on human population, but environmental degradation has total, continuous, extended damage to not just the biodiversity, but to humans, make it impossible. Why would people see the danger of crossing the Mediterranean Sea, the danger of crossing the Sahara Desert, but they keep moving, is because the, base, the basis of their survival in their home countries have been destroyed by global capital, by exploitation by transnational corporations like any, like Shell, like Chevron, and all those who are extractive for minerals. So this is my short definition of, <laughs> of forced migration. And, you know, I say this because the long story is really long. Because the long story is driven not just by greed, not just by exploitation, but, but also by environmental racism. And this is what we see in the connection between corporations and the territories that they exploit. And these corporations don't even add value to the local economies. I'll give you an example of the oil corporations because I, I, I have suffered the impact of oil exploitation for, for decades. And my people are suffering every day because of what the oil corporations are doing. The transnational oil companies don't invest beyond about 5% of their investment in the places that where they're exploiting. And so you take everything out and put back very little. You know, some money is put back, of course, but that doesn't trickle down. You know, you know how the way this, the way this thing works. There's nothing like trickle down economy. Everything is trickling up. And those at the bottom are feeding those at the top. And when the people at the bottom want to uh, struggle to survive, they just have to change their location. And nobody should be stopped from changing their location. We can't build walls all over the, the world, virtual or physical. Because what is going on where politicians and transnational corporations makes it imperative that people move from place to place if they're going to see tomorrow. And this is why I'm so glad to be here today because this camp is made, mostly, made up mostly of young people. The future is about the young people. Those of us who are already ancestors can only share a little bit of wisdom and urge you all to run with it. It is the stopping migration is like stopping human survival. And we should do all we can to ensure that the walls are broken down and that the borders are open and that the seas are open and that the ships and the boats can move freely and humans can find security and safety. I'll pause here.